Hi, thanks for joining me. Jim Melcher for Desert Owl Media. We did a long series together on my top 10 tips for black and white development. And today, I plan to go downstairs and develop this role of Lomochrome Metropolis C41 process. I haven't done color at home for a while, but I'm going to do it today, mix up some chemicals and develop this role and maybe an, another or two that I've got backed up downstairs. And I thought it would be appropriate to lay down my top 10 tips for color developing as well. So first, I thought I'd talk briefly about why I prefer black and white. So the only printing I do at home right now is black and white. I don't have a digital printer. I don't, I've not tried to master color at all. And once you immerse yourself in the black and white processes and start to sense the kind of control you have at every step of that process, it doesn't seem like there can be anything that can compete with that. I'm probably giving color printing short shrift, but I do think what you're doing when you create a negative in black and white is a very different approach because you're targeting all the control you'll have in the darkroom for your print. Your, your negative printed just straight print might be quite unremarkable, but if you're capturing the tones you want to capture at all the different parts of that negative, you have the ability to communicate with that negative from a darkroom print that can depart quite significantly from the negative itself, from a straight print. should probably do a whole video on that. Maybe I will. So along with that, the tradition of black and white photography goes back to the beginning of photography. And when you're doing it, when you're pre-visualizing a picture, when you're taking the picture, even loading the film, you know, everything, everything about the process, developing your black and white, choosing a developer, you know, finding the right, correct time for the exposures you're creating, taking that negative into the darkroom and putting it through a paper choice, putting it through a developer choice, timing, dodging, burning, toning. It's a tradition and you feel like you're becoming part of it. There is a similar thing just in choosing cameras and I think that's maybe why some of us wind up with too many cameras. We want to experience what it was to be the person in history who created that photograph that we so admire. We don't necessarily want to be, you know, at Omaha Beach on V-Day with a Contax rangefinder in our hands. But the experience of being the photographer who used that day to day, I think that's, that's an attractive thing to, well, at least to me, that's why I have too many cameras. So that said about why I prefer black and white, why shoot color then? Why shoot color? Why develop color negatives? Either at a shop or at home when digital is a pretty wonderful system for getting color images. Well, first, color pictures are just gorgeous. The world is gorgeous in all its colors. You want to be able to represent that. And in film, with the film choices, even the few film choices we still have, there is still a lot, lot to be desired in the images we can create in color, or even for digital printing, if that's the way you're going to be printing. Certainly instant, instant sharing, once you've developed and scanned your negatives or scanned your positives, is unique. The qualities of film are unique. They're, and if you've done anything with Photoshop or any of the various ways of altering a digital file, you'll find people trying to help you make your digital files look like film because it's an attractive thing. The analog experience is still valued. Uh, color. Well, I mean, I, although I take probably too many black and white photos of flowers, really color is the way flowers should be represented. So there are, there are many subjects that don't present themselves in their awesomeness unless there's color. Um, also, if your family is like me, my daughter, when I'm working with her, when I have commissions from her, she's my only real customer. Um, customer. She wants color. She wants film. 
but she wants color. And I know for holiday occasions, you know, with certain typical colors, you want to have some color pictures from that too. So your wife, your family, yourself might be, might be demanding that a certain role of, of experiences that you're going to record be in color. Another thing for, if, if you're just getting into film, I would think that since we always see in color, the experience of creating a color photograph can be more like what your everyday experience is. I don't want to downplay what composition is like in, for color photographers because I think it's a real discipline, but it's not quite as unique a discipline as black and white photography where you have to abstract from the color and you have to be thinking in tones and you have to be thinking in getting those tones onto film and you're, you're not necessarily even trying to make the negative look like what you're seeing because the negative is a means to a print and you need to record maybe some tones that are not that obvious. You need to highlight them in some way in black with a black and white photograph so that you can include them in your final product. So in a way, composition is easier. You can, your, your jumping off point to composition is your everyday experience, what you always, always are seeing, which is color, assuming you're not <laughs> radically colorblind. So that's, that, that's a, an intro to the question of what now, if I'm going to take some color negatives, shoot some color negatives, how do I develop at home?